You may relegate data to a storage device, but what good is that data which you cannot access back? Hello and welcome to my talk on Where is my data? The challenges of the next generation storage and applications. This is Ankit Mathur, Chief Architect NAS Storage at Huawei Technologies India Private Limited. And first and foremost, let's go through the disclaimers. So the opinions here are all mine. Do not take these as market commitments or roadmap from the company. And I have used uh, some data and trends that I found over the net to express more strongly the idea that I wanted to carry across to you guys. So let's go with the good news. If you are in the sales and marketing of storage companies, data is actually growing at a very fast pace. So it is estimated that by the year 2025, there will be 175 zettabytes of data in the global data sphere. And as of today, or actually dawn of 2020, we were at 44 zettabytes. So that's a tremendous amount of growth. And the amount of data that's being generated on a per day basis, as you can see here in 2018, was just 2.8 exabytes. I'm saying just because it looks small when you compare it with the number that we would be generating on a per day basis in the year 2025. And that's 463 exabytes. So although it's a good news for the marketing and salespeople, it's a lot of challenges for us engineers who are designing systems to cater to carrying across, storing the data, getting it back, to the applications as and when needed. So that's where, where the data production needs come in. So all of the data that's being generated is not critical data. Some of the data would be generated once and then maybe never accessed again. Well, I'm hinting at those people who are active on social media. So you may be posting, but if you don't have enough followers, who's viewing it? So let's come to the data that's potentially critical which is critical and hypercritical. And there are real-time applications already that look at this data and predict what's going to happen in the future or what's required by the business right away. There's a lot of metadata analytics that's going in and data is being generated with mobile endpoints, uh, data is going in, into the cloud, and there is a lot of machine learning that's happening on this data. So on the left, you can see that by market, the amount of requirements by each vertical as to how much data they need by 2027 and as a comparison of what it was in 2019. Many of you here amongst us are likely experts in the storage in the areas of data protection, data replication, data backup. But to get everyone on the same page, let me quickly run through what are the traditional concepts of what it means when you say data protection? So data protection principles, starting with the very basic, snapshots. So snapshots are nothing but a point in time view of the data. They may or may not use additional space depending on the implementation. And this can be a building block for rest of the technology for data protection. So snapshots as such do not protect your data against uh, the hardware or the equipment failure. It's mostly against user or human error or application errors. So in case you end up making a mistake, you can go back in time and get a copy of your data as it existed at a previous time point. Also, now snapshots are being increasingly used as a copy that can be a representative of the original data and it can be used for data mining or testing your applications. And there are various ways of taking a snapshot. One is like a crash consistent, wherein you do not care for running applications. You just take a snapshot on the storage. You maintain a copy of that. So that's what is called crash consistent. And then there is also the technology wherein the application itself, the framework is involved and wherein the application quiescence gets to a consistent point and allows the storage to take a snapshot such that you know there is a checkpoint that has been recorded 
And in case you move back, restore to this snapshot copy, you can start off as if the application can continue from the point where it left off at the time where snapshot was taken. So next in the data protection principles is the backup, the most basic of things. So if you have a laptop or desktop at home and you connect it to a USB external drive and take a copy of your data, that's backup. So you may take a whole copy of the data into the external storage, or if you have already taken the whole copy, you may have a technology where you can find differences and just back up each time only the difference as compared to a previous backup point. In case you hit a data loss or you want to reference back as the data existed previously, you can do a restore of the whole data set or of a file or a subset of the data. Tapes, as people call them as history, are not really there yet, are still popular, still sell, and probably one of the most reliable and cheap ways of taking a data backup. People may do backups on drives or there are many cloud-based solutions to take a backup. Snapshots may be a basis of taking a backup in many solutions because snapshots do not change themselves. It's easier to take a consistent copy of the data and hence you can use a snapshot primarily as a point to do a differencing of what changed from the previous point and also take a non-changing copy of data to take a backup. Next in the principles is replication. And replication is nothing but a technology of getting data replicated from your primary site to another site. So you are creating a distance between your failure domain, the primary system, and where you are making a copy of the data. And it is core to how disaster recovery and business continuity would work. So business continuity is something like, in case disaster strikes, how does your system continue working in a degraded mode? Basically, providing continuity to your business. Disaster recovery is, if disaster already struck, how do I recover data as it was before the disaster? And there are many objectives you could have based on how serious you are about the business. As in, if you want to have exact all the data being uh, replicated as and when it happens, you may go for a synchronous copy of the data. It comes at its own cost because you cannot proceed until data has been committed to all the locations. And if you are okay losing some certain number of seconds, minutes or hours of data, you may have a recovery point objective or an RPO, which is greater than zero. And this makes the performance and the equipment much more palatable because it can be achieved with less expensive equipment. So next is the fray of data protection is the cybersecurity and compliance. So when you're talking about cybersecurity, you're talking about securing your data as well as the hardware, the network, the software. So no one should be able to come in unauthorized and make changes to the system in a way to disrupt the operations, misdirect the services, or have you lose the data. Because data for a lot of business is actually money. So there can be attacks like malware coming in, there could be phishing attacks, there could be man in the middle attacks, there could be denial of service attacks, there could be SQL injection, or you could have also have ransomware attacks. So all of this, the protection against any of these comes in the scope of cybersecurity. That is, you should be able to protect your data. And by protection, one is someone getting access coming into the data. Second is if such an attack does go through, how do you provide the business continuity and data availability beyond such attacks? Next is also the compliance here. So compliance is a big word. It has a lot of things coming in. 
there are various standards like in the area of medical science you have standards like hipaa that govern how do you handle the data and then if you are a finance organization a bank or a trading company then there are certain laws around what you can do what you cannot do and traceability of operations around it so there are regulations governing you so you need transparency you need policies you also need governance of the data what can go where who can access which part of the data so all of these are the more traditional ways of how data has been handled in the various deployments and applications so in the traditional setups you would have a very simplified view of the hardware software and what is the data set that the application is accessing and you can actually draw a line around that and say this is my data and i need to protect this data and i can have policies around it because it's all centralized in some specific places only there are certain sectors that would have very specific compliance requirements and also the data being hosted in data centers and clouds you know the boundaries you can have intrusion detection at the boundary of the system you can have your own trusted devices only access the data but in the newer set of deployment some of these things are in for a change and we will see why the same policies same methods cannot simply scale and help us in those scenarios for example a lot of corporations are allowing bring your own device you can access your email and other data over your mobile phones or uh, tablets and which means that these systems are coming in from outside they have access to your data increased deployment of cloud and then edge devices data coming in from the iot devices into the system means you need to have network and you need to have a conduit of allowing systems to make modifications sending in data and of course you are opening the window for attacks as well on the same paths so now let's take a look at the newer deployments how things are changing here so apps are no longer being run in a single data center apps may run in a multi cloud setup be it a business requirement or be it a cost requirement or maybe access zone you have centers at various places and you want to have the closest data center or the cloud uh, center provide access to your data but this comes with its own set of challenges now the data is present in the edge devices the iot devices it is present in multiple clouds here the data is also present in your data center so what all matters as a place where data is stored what all matters as the network and hardware device in case you are bringing bringing around a plan for disaster recovery for business continuity are the app framers aware of all the properties of the underlying network and hardware for example are certain data being already mirrored replicated how do the app framers integrate and communicate those so these are some of the challenges that come in with the multi cloud data center hybrid and edge kind of deployments so let's take an example of well what is this can you take a guess is it an aircraft propeller or some advanced um, spacex technology to go to the outer space well this is trying to take a snapshot of an aircraft propeller and because the way the scanning is done in the sensors for cameras these days you scan a specific line and then scan the next line so you are taking a snapshot of each one of these lines one by one but the propeller is moving so fast by the time you come to scan the first one and the second line the propeller has moved from its place why am i talking about this well when you use the same concepts as you applied on a data center based system or on a large geo distributed system you can no longer get a very consistent copy of the data you need certain different technologies you need deeper integration with the application so what are the challenges this poses so to start with 
the apps need to comply to some standardized generic framework or you need to build a custom solution for each app you need to have reliability and availability built in into all the involved systems otherwise you are exposed to the strength of the weakest link you lose a certain copy of the data and that might be critical and your entire data actually appears corrupted because you cannot reconstruct what the world looked like at that point in time also since you are using iot devices edge devices and they may be running different systems different operating systems different software and also they do not have the same computational power to look at intrusion detection so you may need to look at security aspects on those devices as well what all data can they push in what can they modify and also the data availability needs to look at the reliability of those networks on which these devices are connected to so in case you have a distributed geo uh, distributed data copy that is a part of the data is in the data center and, and another diff or part of the data is still lying in a in an edge device but you lose the network to the edge device can you still reconstruct maybe in a degraded mode a copy of the data or not so let's take a look at other challenges coming in so when you're generating so much of data and you can't reference it back in time it's not very useful and it has been found that data scientists when they are analyzing the data they take all the way from 45 percent to 80 percent of the time doing data load data cleansing trying to visualize and the actual processing model training is like a mere 20 to 50 percent of the time only so you are losing on critical time of your resources so what are the challenges here as you can see the 451 research gartner forbes all are talking about that if you need to uh, drive through data you need to have a catalog you need to have a way to get to that data really fast and quick but then building of the catalog and indexing would require you to move the data to the indexing service it could be a distributed service but still you may need to churn the data around then you may catalog or index the data using one service and i may query it from another user so you need to build in security because now suddenly the catalog has information of all your data you need to protect it you need to have an rbac a role based access control to the catalog data because if you had access to build the catalog and i didn't have access to the data but i query the catalog i know what data you have and i may have enough hints to compromise the data that you hold then there are more challenges coming in from cybersecurity and compliance we talked about iot devices getting access to the system and because of that you have opened a port into your network you have allowed systems to connect in and push data but that also creates a window for ransomware and other malware to come in and execute on the data that you have in your protected data center data center by what i mean could be a cloud deployment a hybrid cloud deployment or it could be your data center within the walls of a secure uh, network you may also have policies that may apply to the data there may be certain information like can i share the credit card information across freely if i have those in the record can i take data that belongs to users of a certain zone across and process them in another zone this has become increasingly important and a lot of you might be quoting gdpr as a way of managing controlling and processing data in europe but pretty much all the countries who are generating huge amounts of data they are looking at policies on data privacy and who can access what data where it should reside but when we are creating a data protection solution which is uh, geo um, specific then we need to have ways of applying policies on top of that can i analyze the data automatically can i use machine learning to do that can i advise on what should stay where and so on and so forth 
Well, now let's take a look at the new architectures, new hardware, new ways of deploying systems that are coming in and also changing the way we look at the system. Earlier in the day, there was an interesting talk by Tom Coughlin around persistent memories, how persistent memories are being deployed in various places, including all the way to the edge devices. So what are persistent memories doing for us to take a relook at the system? Persistent memories themselves can allow for latencies in the tune of 300 nanoseconds, but they are persistent. Unlike the DRAM, they actually hold the data and we need to have architecture that can take benefit of this property. But then if persistent memory is present inside one device and you lose that device, you can actually lose the data. So when we actually want to build in a reliability and availability solution, you may want to create a copy of the data on another device, another location, and you may want to carry the data out of the system to another device. And then we are talking about latencies in the tune of one microsecond. So from 300 nanoseconds, we lose on latency and the benefits of bringing in persistent memories. Also, if you are doing operations in the software stack to create copies, create buffers, create queues, it cannot keep up with the rate at which persistent memories can do IO. And therefore, you need to rethink the entire architecture there as well. And also at the current price point, we may still not see a system purely running on persistent memories anytime soon. It may be a tiered system where the capacity is being provided by SSDs, HDDs, or some external storage, be it cloud or something else. So how do those solutions work? And then how do we build in a consistent view of the data and also follow the recovery point objectives for the data and build a solution with persistent memories and the emerging technologies in the networking technologies, be it CXL or C6 or others. Well, talking about tiering, caching and acceleration, there is going to be deployments wherein you may have an acceleration device with a localized cache. It may be front-ending various types of storage. It could have a local disk. It could be fetching data from the cloud or it could be front-ending other third-party store. And there could be multiple instances of these. And when you have multiple instances of these, you may want to have a consistent view of the data. The data that the application is used to see. So how do we build a consistent view of this data and provide the data protection objectives to it? So next, another a form of deployment that we are increasingly seeing today is the disaggregated model. So there is an interesting discussion today evening driven by Niranjan and I'm looking forward to uh, being part of that. So it will be talking about various ways how you can have a composable architecture. You can bring in as much CPU as you need, as much memory as you need, plugins, GPUs, if you will, put in FPGAs and push in storage based on your requirement, be it flash or disk, and all of that switch through a customized network. So the CPU can access any other memory and so on and so forth. It sounds really nice, but then it becomes a big challenge when you look at protecting that data. You may want to have better performance, so you may want to separate the data access and the metadata access. You may have direct access to memories. So you may have the CPU talk to copy of memory of another system. So CPU from here talks to memory of another system, but then this poses challenges around security and compliance. You may have a consistent view because the way the job was distributed, each CPU is working with its own copy of data. But when you are taking a snapshot of this or a consistent point in time view of this, you may need a, another paradigm of programming. How do I do it? Actually, so to speak, the entire compute, memory, network, and the programming model needs to be built ground up. You need to see how, when you write a program, where the CPU is, what kind of GPU 
FPGA and size of memory do I have? What kind of storage is available? All of that may be variable based on where I deploy the system. It should be able to auto tune and uh, work accordingly. So these are some of the challenges and there are many more. So coming to the end of my talk here, what do we conclude? So all of these emerging hardware, disaggregated composable architecture and the data intensive applications that are making use of this require us to relook at the data protection techniques. We need to see how do we create that view? How do we integrate with the application together? So the data protection needs to be driven all the way from the app all the way to where the data is being stored. And it gets complicated by also a geo distributed deployment from a multi cloud edge and data center coming in. So you need a framework that can tightly integrate well loosely because you are talking about variable number of devices and different number of multi cloud access zones and the framework and the architecture needs to accommodate all of that. Then there are some newer machine learning and AI technologies, and then you can build catalog on top of it. Can we use these to our advantage for providing faster access to where your data lies and also driving policies and compliance? So while I'm at it, let me also talk about what is Huawei doing about all of this that I talked about and many more things in its office in India. So Huawei in India is working on file system technologies, building ecosystem, using the emerging memory and communication technologies. We are also working towards storage for high performance computing, trying to really drive it to the edge and extracting every bit of performance out of the system. We are looking at data management, data move for data centers, multi clouds and hybrid cloud scenarios. And we are also looking at applying machine learning and AI technologies to various aspects of storage workflows, be it actually enhancing the AI itself and using the AI to our advantage in the storage system. So with that, I thank you for being patient and listening out to me. And I will be there available on the chat. And if you have any questions, please post them across and I'll be happy to answer those. Thank you.